Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. It's been, I don't know, a long time, <laughs> uh, months since I've recorded an episode. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, if you follow my Facebook posts and uh, Instagrams and the tweets and the Twitters and all that, you'll, you'll know, uh, basically, you know, I, I took a vacation, my computer crapped out, I had to get a new computer, and then just stuff in general, uh, working on uh, personal life and professional life, but man, it's great to be back on the set, uh, back, back on the set and covering all bets. That's a reference to, uh, BT, uh, the song Smart Bomb. I would love to use that for, for an intro for this particular episode, but there's copyright issues. So just put that in your head, or if you don't know the song, go find it. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> so I'm really excited to do this particular, um, wine. This is, um, this is why you review all the sub $20 bottles of wine because you sometimes get the uh, bottles of wine that are more than $100 retail um, as a, as for review purposes, but basically as a treat. Uh, it's a thank you for reviewing all the other stuff. Um, so I do have to thank, um, who, who sent this one to me? Uh, Kate, Kate over at the Creative Palette. Um, send, sending me a whole bunch of wine. I, even got, I got way more wines too from those guys and from all a bunch of people, uh, sample stuff. So, uh, again, Kate, thank you. I, I appreciate your patience before, uh, me in reviewing this wine. Let's be honest. This is a wine that isn't necessarily a pop and pour wine. Um, this is something as one of my colleagues said, when I posted a picture of it, uh, he said, lay it down. Well, unfortunately, it's a review wine, so it can't really lay it down for too many years. We are going to use the Corvin on it, um, but I do anticipate uh, cracking this puppy open sometime within the next six months to a year, um, just because I know while the Corvin's an awesome product, um, it's not indefinite. <laughs> it's not going to be forever for it to uh, keep things great. Uh, anyway, uh, this has been at cellar temperature for months now. Um, it's warmed up a bit, so it's not gonna be too terribly cold. It should be actually pretty close to perfect serving temperature, which is in the mid 60s rather than the 72-ish or so, whatever the house is at. Um, what, oh, what is the wine? <laughs> I'm so excited to, to do this wine. All right, so this is the 2012 Don Melchor. You know why I know that? Because I, though I sat down with a winemaker for lunch one day a few months ago, uh, talking about their other products, and I asked them how to pronounce it. Uh, so the Don Melchor, I've been saying Don Melchor all these years, um, Cabernet Sauvignon de Puente Alto Vineyard. Um, now this wine is um, a blend of mostly Cab, it's 90% Cabernet Sauvignon, 7.1% Cabernet Franc, 1.9% Merlot, and 1% Petit Verdot. They're just kind of missing the Malbec because they put it in all the other wines, I guess. Anyway, um, so uh, this is, uh, so the Puente Alto DO is in the Alto Maipo Valley. Um, so let's kind of talk about that, you know, with, with Chile and with Argentina, um, we need to start talking about some sub appellations now instead of just like it's Maipo or it's Mendoza. You know, they're, they're starting to really hone in on their sub appellations. I mean, they're already there, but, and they're, they're actually, you know, official, but now, but let's actually get the wines from there to show what they are. Um, anyway, so we've got that going on. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the, uh, the vineyards are, uh, 650 meters above sea level. So quick math, that's between 1900 and 2100 feet ish. Um, so pretty high up and, um, oh, I was going to say there's a few other things I'm talking about. Um, it is aged for 15 months in French oak barrel 
Uh, 71% are new, 29% are second use barrel. Uh, they say the aging potential of this is 20 to 25 years. Um, I won't go through um, the entire uh, history of this winery because um, I've talked about it in other, in other um, uh, episodes, but Conchiatoro is a big, 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 big player uh, in Chile. They make everything from you know, the $6 bottles of wine, which I'm going to be doing later th tonight for a few weeks from now, all the way up to this bad boy. All right, so um, now that we've taken five minutes of the video to go through all that, let's get into this wine. I already did a little spritz real quick, but I'm do it again. Really just make sure I had gas in there. It's been a minute since I've used it. Do, do, do. How you doing? So I'm also resuming all of my official studies uh, in the quest for the green pin. Uh, you sometimes see me hashtag that. Um, I have decided that I'm going to do something a little bit different and probably different than what most people are doing. I'm starting really from the end and I'm going to finish at the beginning as far as subject matter um, for uh, studying. So what I've been doing now is uh, spirits, beer sake, basically anything that wasn't wine and uh, going through that and creating a whole bunch of test questions for myself uh, using various sources, mostly Guildsom. Uh, they are a fantastic resource uh, for information, um, but you know, making sure I'm, I'm using other resources as necessary, um, creating mock questions. I'm also uh, figured out, I don't know, that you can actually print flashcards. You get a little Avery, whatever it, number it is, and ch -ch -ch -ch, double sided and bought a printer for that too, actually. The printer, the other printer we had at the house, then do the automatic, you know, double, double sided. Um, so I'm uh, printing color. It's, it's great. Um, so yeah, I'm doing that with uh, flashcards and um, yeah, I should be finished in a year and hopefully be wearing a green pin this week, next year. All right. Well, the week I'm recording this, which is, uh, what's today, the it? 13th. Well, it's really Friday, midnight, 1230 in the morning, Friday, but yes. So uh, July 12th. 13th, 14th when I'm recording this. All right, so let's get into the wine. Um, should I get the, should we get the white background real quick? So you know what, there's, there's a bit of, it's kind of dull, which is fine, it's okay for it's a red wine. Um, it's not like a star bright or a bright, um, you know, it's mostly opaque. I uh, really can't see through it. You know, it's got a really deep concentration. Uh, really ruby, deep ruby red, um, and not a whole lot of rim variation, but there is, um, you know, a bit of um, brownish red uh, on the edge. I mean, it is a five-year-old wine, so there should be maybe a touch of age showing on it. I'm not really, you know, going to say, well, it's, you know, obviously age. Uh, and a little bit of staining on the glass. Um, that's effectively part of the grid that I just did there. Um, let's, let's dive our nose into it. So a pr uh, pretty moderate intensity on on the uh, on the nose. We'll call it maybe a medium plus. And uh, you know, let's let's put the microphone just a, just a touch farther down, just because it's kind of hitting it's kind of hitting the chin there. There we go. All right. Um, It really does lead with uh, really dark fruit, black cherry, black raspberry, um, blackberry. You can really smell oak on here. I mean, it is a lot of new oak on there, but you're going to smell it. Um, you know, I really get a lot of vanilla from it and some baking spices, brown spices, things like that. It's really, it's a really nice smelling wine. Uh, a bit of uh, creaminess to it, uh, which I really attribute to the vanilla. Like vanilla bean pod or vanilla pod, whatever you want to call it. It's a nice smelling wine. It is a little cool, so um, it may not be as aromatic as it would be if it was perfectly at room temperature. Well, not perfectly, but at room temperature. Um, but smelling pretty nice. Oh, it retails, it's just a retail price is $125. Forgot about that. But it was already on the lower third. Mm. 
Mm. Oh, hell no, I'm not spitting this. Um, this should have been the last wine of the night, but I'm only going to drink so much. Um, it's good. I mean, let's be honest, this is definitely not a $6 bottle of wine or a $10 or a $20. You can, you can taste that there's, you know, much better, um, what much better grapes in it to begin with. Um, the winemaking and all that is, is going to justify the higher price. Again, it's a little cool, but that's great for actually red wines. If it got a little touch of, of uh, chill to it. You know, I get a bit of uh, bitter dark chocolate uh, on the palate. Um, again, with the black fruit. Really, it's really black fruit driven. Uh, there, there's not a whole lot of red or blue fruit on there. Um, there's also a bit of um, uh, cedar box uh, to it. Um, just, just literally like walking into a barrel room at a winery, but you're, but you're tasting the wood on that. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not like overpowering. It's just, it's just there. Just have that feeling like, man, I'm, I'm actually drinking this in the barrel room, right? Which, oh, that barrel room behind me, right? Um, that would be awesome if I could be back there. I'm planning a trip to Burgundy. That's Bordeaux. Um, really should go visit that place again. Cause I wasn't able to interview the guy. It was too late. I showed up too late. It was my last stop of the night. Um, as a matter of fact, that winery was founded depending on what, depending on what uh, uh, um, pieces of documentation you're looking at was founded in 1337. That's why I went there. Uh, Petit Pouc. Anyway, this is a really nice wine. Uh, if it warmed up a little bit, it'd probably be a little more aromatic, a little more uh, on, on the palate. Oh, this is about to run out of gas. I, I heard this, it's that little thing is about to pop. I don't know if you can hear it yet. I thought it was the fan on the laptop for a second. There you go. Here it comes. Anyway, um, let's just, let's just finish it off. I don't know why this does that. And I don't know if it's like almost out. I think it was, it feels pretty light. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, Really smooth wine. Uh, the tannins are not overpowering. Um, you know, it's still a full-bodied wine, but yeah, it's it's a beautiful wine. I mean, I could I could definitely sip on this, but this definitely needs some food. You get a nice steak in front of you with like a chimichurri sauce. Yeah, I went to South America. Um, actually, I don't know if chimichurri is Chilean or Argentinian, <laughs> but anyway, it's from South America um, or some type of you know a little bit of extra spice to it. Um, not necessarily a blackened, but you know, a little, little bit of a uh, pepper encrusted to kind of balance out the fruit, the uh, fruit forwardness of it. Hmm. It is tasty. Listen, if you can afford a hundred, a hundred plus dollars for a bottle of wine, you want something really special. Uh, you want to really enjoy uh, a well-made wine from South America. Oh, I get a little bit of green too. I, green as in bell pepper. Um, it was there right at the end. So I think if I let this wine warm up just a little bit, we might be able to get some of that um, bell pepper type of pyrazine uh, flavor. But it really is like right at the end. It was like a, a fleeting moment. And I don't know if, it, if I actually opened that bottle and, and drank it, if it would be there. But um, that was beautiful. And for a long time viewers of the show, you know I, I love when I get pyrazines in my in my cabs because it's it's a characteristic of the wine of the grape, and I, I love it when it's not manipulated out or it's just fact of the matter is sometimes you know really when the grapes are nice and ripe it's just not going to be there. It, it, this is in Bordeaux that's not as ripe. That's why they're there. Anyway, um, it's a beautiful wine. I've babbled on for long enough for just one wine. Um, Get it if you can afford it. 
or someone can buy it for you as a gift. Uh, if you're in a restaurant, it's gonna be a couple hundred dollars on a wine list, so just be prepared for that. Um, this, is, this, is a, this is a great wine. Um, and uh, I'm very proud and blessed and thankful that I was given a bottle for sample. Um, and uh, I cannot wait to try this wine uh, in a less antiseptic and, and uh, setting um, to share with some friends or whatever. So that'd be awesome. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I got, a, I got five more episodes to record. Um, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the links below for more information about uh, the winery. And uh, hit the donate button if you'd like to send me some money uh, so I can buy wine or just so I can just like buy stuff or go on my trip to Bordeaux. I mean, uh, Burgundy. Ah, Bordeaux saw my mind. Um, you know, you could do that. I, I do take donations. <laughs> um, it is an expensive trip, but, uh, but I'm budgeting for it. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for uh, stopping by and we'll see everyone again next time.